Centuries ago, in a land far, far away from the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania, lived a priest named Valentine of the Roman Empire. He was known throughout the land as a man of boundless love and charity. With great compassion and heart, he sheltered Christians from the persecution of Emperor Claudius II, who had put him in chains. While in the dungeons, Valentine converted Asterius the jailer in charge of guarding him to Christianity. He also cured Asterius' daughter of blindness and baptized the entire family. He performed weddings for soldiers, which was forbidden by the Roman Emperor. When the Emperor Claudius heard what Valentine was doing, he became so angry that he ordered Valentine to be beaten with clubs and beheaded. The death sentence was carried out on February 14th, 269 AD. The church declared him a saint and preserved his remains in the church of St. Praxitus in Rome. Since that time, there have been many traditions associated with celebrating St. Valentine's Day on February 14th. The Feast of St. Valentine was one of the earliest recorded religious events held in remembrance of St. Valentine marking the importance of food in celebrating the day. Another ceremony involved writing the names of all the girls on a piece of paper and putting them into a box, then having the boys draw out a name. The name the boy drew would be referred to as his Valentine. The two would spend the day together, and it was considered an omen that the couple would someday be married, for it was the will of Cupid, the god of love. Several mythologies portray Cupid as an archer who would shoot arrows into the heart of couples to make them fall madly in love. Other myths depicted him as a cruel god, making people suffer due to unrequited love. Symbolism is important on Valentine's Day, and because the avian mating season starts in mid-February, birds became a symbol of love. In addition to images of Cupid and hearts, Traditional symbolic gifts of love include gifts of candy and flowers, with red roses representing beauty and love. Several myths started to develop surrounding St. Valentine's Day. One such belief is that the first two unmarried people to encounter each other on Valentine's Day morning would be married. One of the customs that has survived throughout the ages has been the exchanging of Valentines. The tradition has gone from doing special deeds for someone to trading handwritten poems, prose, songs, and drawings, which were usually comic, burlesque, or sentimental in nature. In addition, flowers, homemade candies, cookies, and cakes were often exchanged. And as various technologies developed, photographs became popular, later joined by videos, CDs, and DVDs. In the 1970s, a trend in the Poconos was the expression of one's love for their Valentine to be printed in the classified ads of the local newspaper. Now in the 21st century, this gesture has transformed into YouTube and TikTok videos, social media posts, text messages, and the ever-present emoji. Since Y2K, Valentine's Day has also evolved by being able to openly express your love or admiration for another person, regardless of gender. So how was Valentine's Day traditionally celebrated in the Pocono Mountains? Going back to the earliest records in the local newspapers, there were accounts of school celebrations involving exchanging of Valentines and parties, 
where cards were distributed, and there were plenty of heart-shaped candies and cakes. In the 1800s, the religious significance of observing St. Valentine's Day was still observed in the Pocono Mountains, and local papers carried historic accounts of how Valentine's Day originated. At the turn of the 20th century, there was less emphasis on the religious significance of Valentine's Day, giving way to more social activities. Ladies' luncheons and teas were common, with potluck dinners, gatherings at restaurants, and parties held throughout the day. Sending commercial greeting cards to one another has also become popular. In those days, Valentine's cards were traditionally sent by mail. And anyone living in the Poconos is well aware that February can bring some of the coldest and extreme weather to the mountains. There were many accounts of parties being postponed. And Valentine's cards, unable to be delivered by the postal service on February 14th, that arrived many days later due to record-setting blizzards. Travel by horse-drawn sleigh, cross-country skiing, and snowshoeing were their best forms of travel over snow-packed terrains during winter storms. In the mid-20th century, social gatherings expanded to include Valentine's Day dances, card parties, and even costume parties. Box candies, flowers, dinners, and TV shows marking the occasion. Romantic overnight stays or weekend getaways along with February 14th engagements and weddings grew in popularity as well. The Pocono Mountains not only became popular for locations for honeymoons, but was also considered the Valentine's Day destination of the world. Historically, the favorite gifts exchanged in the Pocono Mountains included lingerie, jewelry, photographs, bouquets, corsages, chocolate hearts, and other candies. The papers often carried ads for gift suggestions, which included new kitchens, washing machines, dryers, cars, golf clubs, watches, and many other high-end gifts. During the week of February 14, local papers carried Valentine stories. One local columnist wrote that instead of giving your loved one a box of chocolates, you should buy your wife a snow shovel so that she can get exercise and stay in shape. And the response from the wife was buying the man a pair of sweats so that he could go to the gym while she shoveled the snow. Another writer laments the fact that his wife put him into solitary confinement and is treating him badly because when he gave her a wrapped box of chocolates from the local department store and she opened it, it turned out to be a box of milk bone dog biscuits. Going on to state that the error in the gift was not his fault. He suggests that maybe dog biscuits covered in chocolate would have been the appropriate gift for Valentine's Day. And don't do what this husband in the 1950s did. He sent his wife a beautiful bouquet of red and white roses. And if you think he was being romantic, think again. He also sent them collect with a bill for her to pay. There are many timeless Valentine stories published throughout the history of the Poconos. One story was of an infant boy abandoned at a poor house in Easton, Pennsylvania. He was appropriately named Valentine Easton and was raised in an orphanage. The name lives on to this day. There was even a popular character by that name, featured as an American intelligence agent in Detective Magazine during the 1930s. In 1924, local papers carried a story of a shy young boy named Charlie, who went into the candy store looking for a gift for the object of his secret admiration. He discovers the latest confectionery, chocolate letters. He purchases a prepackaged box of chocolates and delivers them to the house of the young girl, not knowing how she would respond to his gift or his affection for her. After receiving the chocolates, the young girl proceeds to the candy store and picks out letters to craft her response. She delivers them to the young man's doorstep. Charlie opens the box and decodes the letter spelling, I love you too. 
A bit confused, he returns to the candy store, only to find that the box of pre-packaged chocolate letters that he purchased were not random at all, but a message that said, I love you with all of my heart. Realizing the significance of the original message and the young lady's corresponding response, Charlie went home full of hope and expectations. During World War II, schools would send Valentines to hometown soldiers from the Pocono Mountains, fighting the war far from home. In 1941, Ted Fuller left Milford to join the Navy. And when the United States entered the war, he was stationed overseas on active duty. In 1943, the 5th and 6th graders of the School of Milford sent him a Valentine's Day card. His heartfelt response to the students was published in the local paper, thanking the children for their thoughtfulness and telling them how much it meant to him and those serving in the armed services to be remembered when they're far, far from home. Ted survived the war, continuing to serve in the Navy for many years. These stories of Valentine's Day in the Pocono Mountains are full of humor, love, remembering those far from home, getting together with friends and family, expressing feelings and community. Living in the Pocono Mountains provides the perfect backdrop to create a unique experience with those that you love that will be remembered for many years to come. Use your imagination and some hints from the past as your inspiration to make this Valentine's Day an epic adventure or your own historic event. Here's to hearts and hugs from Wally Life.